Hi, welcome to another riveting edition of Ask Jeff, where you can take the time and ask me um, whatever it is that you want to ask, and um, usually, uh, some way or another, we get around to answering it. Now, sometimes we answer via email, sometimes we answer um, via a written post somewhere, and sometimes we just answer you this way. Um, as of late, we've been getting a lot of Ask Jeffs, and they're um, uh, at the time of this recording, actually backing up a little bit, but you have to understand, and this will help you get some perspective when you see this for the first time. Um, this is being recorded near the spring break time of year, uh, a lot going on, and so there's just been a whole lot of things that have uh, kept us out of the usual routine. That settles back down here as we kind of move back through spring break toward Easter. And so if you have a question that's backlogged somewhere, or you feel like you didn't get an answer, don't be afraid to ask it again, or just remind me, we get to them, we really do. Um, then maybe we're just holding it back so we can put it on film, and you never know. Well, you might be finding your question being answered. Now, that's a long introduction, and I've not asked the question yet. And so here's the question. And you're going to think to yourself when you hear this question, why, why, why did you choose this one? I don't know. But the question is this, Jeff, I got bit by an ant today, made me mad, so I tried to drown the ant. Couldn't do it. Why not? How would I know? Why would you ask me that? Well, because I know that I'm a trusted source for information and because you know me well enough to know, because you've listened to me, that I'm also full at times of useless information. And so, once again, we have put the research facilities here at the church at 434 Research Institute at work on these questions, these deep questions of life, and ask the question, well, why are ants so hard to drown. Because if you think about it, it's hard to drown an ant. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. You can immerse one in water, keep it there for hours, even days, and it won't die. Even when you pull it out, it'll appear dead, but before long, it's up moving around again. It's a fun science trick. You can try it. Just don't get bit. Don't tell anybody I told you to do it. You just go try it on your own. The reason, though, that the ants don't drown is because water doesn't penetrate their tiny little breathing tubes. That's right, these ants have these tiny breathing tubes on their body, and water has a lot of surface tension and merely surrounds the ant. So, if our own breathing tubes were blocked, we'd die from lack of oxygen. We know how that works, right? But ants don't. They just suffer carbon dioxide narcosis, which knocks them out. Now, eventually, I guess I will die. But it's amazing how long these ants last. And they have the ability to survive longer in that state than you and I could ever hope to, because we can't. Now, you do wonder if, when these ants come back to life, are they suffering from brain damage? Because not a lot of work has been done on the brain power of an ant. Uh, that wasn't a question, so this is kind of a bonus question. Um, but we don't have the answer to that one. But I would remind you that there are no ants out there writing novels or anything, so they don't have to be that smart. They just have to be ants. Um, obviously, um, ants don't usually deal with rain that way because we know how the way ants work. I mean, they dig underground. So usually when it starts to rain, those ants just disappear. They just go underground. Some can go as far as six feet underground, um, and then they dig their way back out. However... There is another trick that happens, and I know that you wanted to know this as well because, well, we did a lot of research on this. Fire ants in the South are notoriously bad. If you've ever been bitten by a fire ant, you know that you just want to slap that thing and tell God it died and just forget about it because it hurts. But believe it or not, you can see this, you can track this. There's got to be some YouTube videos of this out there. But when it floods, these fire ants actually link their bodies together and they make like this giant float. And they actually float in this line, this string of ants, and they float to safety until they eventually get to a place where they can light and they can go to ground and they can once again go back to doing whatever the ants are doing. And you know who rides in the middle of that safe little raft that travels along? Yeah, the, the queen. Yeah. And so the ant queen remains intact and these ants are able then to get on with their ant life, whatever that is. Fire ants. A lot smarter than we think they are. There's something we got down here in the deep south. I don't know where you're watching this from, but if everyone comes along... Step on it. It's okay with me. Anyway, that's the question. Why won't fire ants drown? And um, why are they so hard to kill? 
They just are. It's the way God made them. And the reason I share that question with you is because, well, it was asked. And I couldn't figure out a way to work it into a sermon, so it ends up here. Thanks for the question. Please don't hesitate to ask. Um, ask often. Ask loudly. Ask with pride. Ask till it hurts. But ask questions. Because remember, there's no question that's a bad question. It doesn't mean that you're going to get an answer to every question. But we'll do our best to answer the ones that seem like they need a legitimate answer. And at the end of the day, it gives us a lot of material that we can do in a show just like this here at the Church of 434 Emotion. So, until next time, you keep asking.